Welcome back. So we are installing our life raft. We ordered it from a place called Life Raft Professionals. Uh, the guy who helped me was Ben. He, they're very helpful. Uh, it comes as a hazmat shipping, so it's kind of expensive to ship. If you can get one local, I highly recommend it. So you don't have to pay for shipping. Also planning to make a cover for this. So we'll have a nice a nice little canvas cover kind of to protect it from the sun. It's kind of, kind of probably get beat up out here. Hey, we're Jenny and Rich, and our stowaway is Twitchell and Rainy Cat. We've been documenting the refit of our 1977 Tayana 37 Bramble On for the past several years. We're proud to say we've done 99.9% .9 of the work ourselves. We've gained a lot of knowledge and experience in the process, and we're happy to pass that wisdom on. So we went with this, this one, it's called the Superior. It's the offshore stream is what it's called. It's a four person life raft. Um, it's got a whole survival kit and all kinds of stuff in it. Um, it's covered, it's got the full cover on the top and a boarding ladder and we got the optional um, hard case with cradle for it. It's got a 12 year warranty on it, which is good. It's uh, in service until 2026. So we've been kicking around uh, where to put this thing. Uh, it's fairly big. It weighs about 80 pounds. We tried to fit it forward of the mast and it fits between the door aid guards, but it's really hard to mount it there from the inside. The amount of things that we have to undo in the ceiling, um, it, it'd be, I don't know, it just, we don't think it's gonna be feasible there. So, we, and the other thing with putting it there is the hydrostatic release is kind of close to the stasel sheets. Um, so we don't know if they would get tangled up or not. And if you flip it around 180 degrees, the hydrostatic release is facing forward. So a boarding wave could potentially inflate it. So, um, I mean, chances are pretty slim, but you never know. With our luck, that was exactly what would happen. So we're going to mount it on our turtle. We made this turtle eight, nine years ago. Uh, it, originally it was a teak, we had a teak turtle and we made this one with the idea that, you know, we put these ribs in there to give some stability and some strength so that we could mount something on it. Um, and we also put the little lip on the forward end for the dodger, um, in anticipation of getting a dodger. So we're going to put it on the turtle. The only problem that we're running into now is, or the only dilemma I should say we're having is the hardware, this is pretty thin. It's strong, but it's not super thick and there's not a lot of clearance between the turtle and the hatch. So any hardware we put to bolt it on there will potentially rub the um, companionway hatch. So I think we come up with a solution for that too. So let's get going. So I'm just making bolts for the, uh, for the cradle to bolt through the thing, uh, the sea turtle. And what I'm having to do is take carriage bolts and grind them down and make them super thin and then cut a slot on the top so that they don't rub the, the companionway hatch when it slides in and out underneath the, underneath the sea hood. So just got this little setup. So the carriage bolts have a square on I had to, and I had to grind that thing down, so we'll see how it works. So I got all the bolts modified and nuts go on top. Now I just got to make little balls of butyl tape and wrap the, just put a little twist of butyl tape around the bolts to seal them off. And then I can tighten this thing down. That one goes. 
It doesn't rub? Let's see. There's a little sticky. Let's see. Let's see. Yeah, it does. What about with a raft loaded on it? I hear it rubbing a little bit. These were tight clearances anyway, so I knew I was gonna have to take some off the uh, wood for the hatch to slide in and out. So it looks like we got rub marks. More? I actually, I see it right here at the edge now. A little bit. Let's see how it goes. No touching. I get just bare, I mean, like minuscule. Let me try it. You can't really even feel it. Okay. Well, yeah. How about this? Yeah, push down on it. Do it a couple times. Do that. Why are you pushing so hard on it? Because I wanted to leave marks. So I, I know, know but if I need is to it gonna anymore. be that? Is it gonna be that no. down that tight on it? No. This is the hydrostatic release. Um, so inside here, there's like a spring-loaded knife blade and there's a pressure switch, pressure sensor or something in there that releases it. I'd like to take it apart and see how it works. Um, yeah, so if the life raft goes somewhere, what is it like one and a half to four meters is what it says on the label. One and a half to four meter hydrostatic release. And that slices this sacrificial loop, which lets the life raft cut loose. And then there's a painter that sticks out the end of the, the side of the box. And that thing goes for a length of 36 feet. It attaches to that. Yeah, it attaches to the shackle that is attached to the bracket. Yeah, it like this. There's just a snap shackle on that side. Cool. Let's see what this is. <laughs> Smooth. It doesn't rub. Oh, uh, there's a. You better shut up. No, there. Is it rubbing seriously? It's just barely. I guess if we rub back and forth on it enough, it'll eventually wear, wear through. All right. So the last thing we got to do is attach the painter to the weak link on the uh, on the hydrostatic release unit. So let's run a shackle through here, and then uh, this goes through here, and it's actually labeled um, right here that it says this side, this end to the painter. There you go. It's just a shackle. And that's the rip cord that sets off the CO2 bottle. Yeah, so just checking off the projects one by one. Jenny's gonna make a cover for this thing. Um, yeah, obviously you have to remove the cover when you're under underway, but uh, something to keep the sun off the case when it's not being, you know, when we're just parked and not sailing. I guess the clock's ticking. This thing's got an expiration date, so. Yeah, we got some projects coming, but stay tuned. Hi, welcome back. No. Be cheerful and nice. I would say welcome back, but I don't mean it. <laughs> That's about it, I should say. <laughs>